Hello and welcome back. Today I have another GPSDO and this time I wanted to try a cheaper one. We have seen that uh, BG7 TBL right here, they were great PLL based. We have seen the Leo Botner works great, can do both PLL and FLL. And of course I have an old Repco, works fine. Uh, the data works fine, but that's a real professional one, also like the Rodin Swatch and the Eurolabs. Of course, those real brands will work. But what about if you buy a cheaper one? This one is around $60, $65, and I just wanted to try it, and it even comes with a GPS antenna. Comes in a nice box, even as sort of a manual. I saw reports in the beginning that people complained there was no manual, but now they, uh, now they edit. I will scan this and put it also in the download link if you want one. And there's a GPS antenna, just those uh, standard multi band, no problems there. 3 volt, 5 volt, I think both. Yeah. And the GPS DO itself, nice display, encoder, push and turn. Doesn't say any design, it just says. GPS disciplined oscillator. In the back we have here, of course, the output for 10 megahertz. We have the GPS antenna and we have the one PPS, 12 volts in, it doesn't come with an adapter on off. That's it. It does look proper. Aluminium box, nice with screws to open. So uh, why is this one so much cheaper than the other ones? Let's have a look inside. Opening is just with four hex screws. Just pick the top ones. Okay, nice. With the um, display module here, we have here a proper OCXO, not a TCXO, but a real OCXO. And I read already in the description of the seller that some will come with a bow Y. This is a bow Y. And some will come with an uh, ISO temp. This bow eye almost looks like a new, but usually they use these uh, second hand ones. Arduino, I even read some people call it a blue pill. It's very versatile and you'll find it in uh, many projects. Uh, this is the GPS receiver. I think some come with a Neo 6. But uh, this is not the Neo6, this is the ATGM336 Edge. We have here in the back a regulator, 5 volts. So instead of 12 volts, if you want to cool it a little bit, then you just put eight, around 8 volts in it. But 12 works. This is interesting, it says here uh, BH3SAP. So this is probably the hemp that designed this, and this is uh, later copied by uh, many others. So we can maybe find something if we search for this. Well, I don't see any magic stuff or complicated processes other than just the Arduino here. Um, this is probably the buffer for the output signal. So I don't think this is PLL based, this is probably FLL based, and that's why maybe also the lower price, but it doesn't mean it's not good. So let's have a closer look. Let's just uh, switch it on and see what happens. By default, the menu is very limited. We have here the contrast offset, PWM set, this is the ADC setting for the OCXO and exit. That's all we have. Now I'm going to connect the GPS antenna. I have that in my splitter right there. And we will just need to wait a very long time. I will do a time lapse because now the, that the PWM setting you saw, it is uh, the setting of the ADC and that uh, kind of drives the voltage of the OCXO. And what it's trying to do, and it will count the pulses between the one PPM to get to that 10 megahertz. And if it is too high, it will drop the voltage, uh, etc. until it's good. But it will slowly go to the correct value because it doesn't want to jump too hard because then it keeps going up and down and going in ping pong. So it will slowly get there. So I will time lapse this.
So that was weird. It started to jump up and down. It was almost there. And then you expect that the value interval before it uh, changes value would be longer and longer and longer until it's there. That, that also happened. But then suddenly it went up and down and up and down. So I'm not sure what is going on. I will have a look on that call sign to see if there is a project and maybe I can update the firmware. So in my research, I found on the EEV blog and they directed me to uh, two repositories. One here from Fredso, uh, which is actually a fork I see here from this other guy, who is this, Daniel Carling. But this one is updated in February. And this one is updated in April. So this is the newest one. So how does this work? I'm not really into this too much, but here it is. Okay, that looks already different. You can see here the time. You see here in the corner. Uh, the menu is a lot more extended, but what does it do? Okay, the main screen. Here we see the number of satellites, the value it needs to adjust the timing there is even a trend screen okay cool you can auto auto you can set the scales you can see now if there is a gps lock or not okay Ooh. okay what we need okay we need here this uh, two dollar uh, dongle and we can just program it directly on the arduino we need to download the software from uh, st.com right here okay we can just download that here no problem and well this is how to do it i will put the link in the bottom pretty cool yeah usually i would not do this but uh, yeah it doesn't work anyway so it only gets better i think Okay, pretty cool, you guys working on this and probably with the whole community. And they actually improved the software a lot. They extended the menu a lot. All you need is a uh, little ST uh, link. Uh, this is one of those uh, copies. You buy it for two, three uh, dollars. And then you should be able to program directly in the Arduino. And you can just download the bin file from their uh, GitLab repository. So what I did, these pins were straightforward. I just bent them a little bit up. So I can connect the ST link just directly on the Arduino here. Yeah. After installing the driver, you do that without uh, the ST link uh, plugged in. I have it here. I uh, just plug it in now. And it should be detected. Bloop. There it is. And here I have my ST link. So that works. That seemed very easy. Let's see if it still boots. The first time the screen stays uh, blank, but when I booted the second time, it did start. Okay, after the update, the software looked a lot better, but I still had that my clock is frozen. And uh, also it, it starts to jump around again. So something is still wrong. So I was about to send it back until I found this. So the problem was uh, not solved and I was reading through the reviews because I thought I should not be the only one. And then I found here uh, the Perpetuo from uh, Czech Republic. He found out what was the problem and he just asked, sent me, sent me an email, so I did. He responded actually the same day, so thank you so much. And uh, he found what was the problem. On the bottom of the Arduino is a wire connected and it is faultly connected to pin 6. It should be connected to pin 5. And here he removed also the, the crystal, but that is maybe not needed because there is a lot of load here. And it will stop uh, vibrating anyway, I think. 
So, what it looks like if you take the Arduino out, you have the wire connected here, which is actually wrong because this apparently goes to pin 6. And if you connect it into this pin, what I will do, it should work. Okay, if this is true, this would be great. So let's change the wire and try again. Okay, that seems to have fixed it. We see here the number of satellites. It's 20. We are very close by here, 37, 38. Well, that's about right. We see the same here. The time is changing now. It, it didn't do that, it froze. So yeah, thank you, my friend from Czech Republic. I noticed, by the way, that also sometimes in a cold start, it doesn't start immediately. First, you have the blank screen. Then I wait 10 seconds, I switch it off. Wait again, then switch it on, and then it does boot, and then you also see uh, the display uh, coming some characters. So this will take a while, because it is slowly adjusting the OCXO to the one PPS from the GPS receiver, but it doesn't want to do too many big jumps, because then it goes up and down, up and down. So what you can do for the next time when I reboot, I can make sure it starts at this level here we can see the trend so it's slowly adjusting it down this is the difference i think if i look at the frequency counter it matches but the next time i want it to start here and of course if it is locked later i will save it there but i've been waiting already a while so i push push again then at least the next time it starts here it oh it sees gps 20 satellites this is the time in utc i don't know what i can do here oh latitude longitude so the reception is good the locator even altitude well it's about right i don't know what is goid now it's easy. About right. Date format you can change. Well, I like this format. Well, what formats we have? No. no. There is no model name. Okay. Uh, no. It is this one. So there are two satellite receivers. Some are delivered with the NEO, and uh, some will be delivered with the AG, ATGM. Uh, I have this one. No. I do not know what this is. This is exit, and how close are we? We are 9.15, so we still need to wait a bit more. So that took a while, but we have here a little lock. So that means it is locked and we are indeed very, very close. It goes around this zero. So let's store this setting. You can see here, that is the trend. Let's store this setting. It probably stays around this. Yeah. Eighteen satellites. Okay, let's have a look at the frequency counter. This is what we see in the frequency counter, and this is below the hertz because we have here one, two, three. One, two, three. Look at this. Let's check that on the, the other. On this frequency counter, it's a lot more easy to see, and it's even better than we saw on the other frequency counter. This is a hertz, so this is like a millihertz. So this 
and this is compared to my other GPS DO, the PG7 uh, TBL. And we can do some graphic stuff as well here. Here we have even a few digits more. Min max deviation. Yeah, and the deviation, look at it, is 0.2 millihertz, more or less. And And here we can see how much it is moving. So it goes up down a little bit compared to my other GPS DL. But this is very, very little. Okay, not that at all. Uh, we needed to do a little uh, modification, changing the wire to the other pin. Maybe something went wrong in the manual uh, process there. Um, we needed to update the software. I don't think it was needed, but the menu is so much more extended. You have so much more information. You can see uh, when it is locked, how many satellites are visible. I really like what they've done. So many thanks to all the people working on that uh, project. And of course, big thanks to the viewer from uh, Czech Republic. You never shared your name, but uh, thank you very much. It was a great help. Otherwise, I could not get it stable and I would have sent it back. So. I am a little bit amazed what they can do for this $65 in their promotion. I'm sure you can get it even lower. It is a proper casing. Yes, there was a little uh, production error, but it was easy to fix. Now we know what we needed to do. Uh, one one millihertz, it was off, but it was also the last digit, and I don't have many more digits here, so that is debatable. Uh, and if it is one millihertz, then for most applications, I'm sure it's good enough. And if not, you can always buy the more expensive ones. But the idea was, how good is this cheap one? Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.